Despite losing a talented 14 senior class, boys lacrosse is still poised to have another successful season, led by their star captains Eric Oswald, Charlie Cohen, and Notre Dame commit Jimmy Kenny. They open the year with a tough loss to Hingham, but have bounced back with two straight wins over Lexington and Braintree. That brings us to this past Tuesday when they faced off against a tough and gritty Walpole Timberwolves team who came in eager to prove they could take down the Rockets. And this one was messy the whole way through. So let's take a look. Early in the first, lots of green turf ahead for Jack Curran, passes over to Sean Riley, who finds Spencer Chapman open and he scores to put the Rockets up by one. They would quickly go up by two, Walpole looking to answer, they find a man open right here and he buries it past sophomore goalie Tommy Peabody to pull within one. Just over a minute to go in the first, Bernice Lassard coming from X, great look, and he gets his second of the game and ties it at two. Heading now to the second, T-Wolves look to have room, but a great check by Jack Wadja knocks the ball loose. Here comes Needham now in transition. Jimmy Kenny leading the break in the middle, passes to Riley right here, who gives it right back, and Kenny shoots a long one and scores Needham back up by one. Walpole trying to even things out before the half. Five seconds left, Matt Collins launches a shot, but what a save here from Peabody. Keeps the Rockets lead 3-2, heading to the third. But the Timberwolves would answer fast. Win the opening faceoff, Rockets yet to win one all game. They find a man cutting down the middle here. He takes it through the Rockets defense, fires one inside, and we are all tied up at three. Just under six minutes now left in the third. Reese Conway comes off a screen, gets around his man, buries it past the goalie, so Rockets go back up by one. But it wouldn't take long for Walpole to answer. They pass out to Collins and he would tie things right back up at four. Under 30 seconds now left in the quarter, Eric Oswald finds Josh Moran open and he immediately fires and scores. And the quarter does not end there. Jimmy Kenny had taken the face off after the goal. He would prevent the T-Wolves from getting possession, so that's a loose ball on the ground and it's scooped up by Wajda for the first official win of the day and he is off. Beats all the orange jerseys down the field, finds himself open, shoots and scores just like that. Needham goes up by two, heading to the fourth, the first two leads of the game. But Walpole definitely not going away, just a minute and a half in. Bounces a shot past Peabody, a hat trick for that kid on the day, back to a one goal game. Rockets down a man due to a penalty and Walpole would capitalize. They find Dylan Needham, nice last name, open on the opposite post and he connects to tie it back up at six. But the Rockets would be handed this gift. t win the faceoff, but they pass it right to Spencer Chapman in front of their own net and he makes them pay Needham back up by one. Five and a half now to go, Rockets hanging on to their slim lead. Collins gets by the Needham defense, but sophomore goalie Tommy Peabody with the huge save. 30 seconds now to go. Rockets looking for an insurance goal. They find Tyler closely right in front and he scores. That will end this one despite a messy game and only winning one face off. The Rockets escape Walpole with the 8-6 win and will get their fourth win over Milton on April 13 to improve to 4-1 on the season. Softball has begun their season with two losses, although both of them falling just short by one run. On Wednesday, April 12th, they were looking to secure their first win when they hosted Milton. Although it seemed to just be the Wildcats' day, as the Rockets couldn't get anything to go their way. So let's head to Claxon to see what happened. Top of the second, Milton with a runner on third. Amanda Ferrer with the pitch to Ellie McConville makes contact right to our shortstop Kraft. Tries to make a play at home, but it's not in time, so Milton goes up by one. Wildcats now up by two in the third inning. Hannah Andrews at bat, laces one deep into the gap. It would bring a runner home. She would try to go for three, but the Rockets able to work quickly and they would get the out. So the lead heads to two for now. Rockets looking to get out of this inning with two outs. Emerson Johnson up for the Wildcats. Nice play here by Brodsky. Throws over to Sitcher at first. Great execution for the third out. As we head to the bottom of the fourth, Brodsky now up for Needham. Grounds one down the first baseline for the single, but Needham would leave two stranded at the end of the fourth and stay scoreless. The fifth would be huge for Milton. They have runners on first and second. Andrews laces one deep into right field to load up the bases with no outs. 
That brings up Victoria Fish, throws one by Kraft, and then through the legs here of Pittman. She would get the double, and that would clear out the bases, pushes the lead for Milton up to seven. Now up eight, still in the fifth inning, Abby Stewartman with two strikes, would go for the bunt, it's a foul, so she's out, runner on third, tries to go as we're caught in a rundown, but McConville plays it well, and she is safe at the plate, and will end it there. The Wildcats end up taking it 10-0 over the Rockets in six innings. Needham drops to 0-3 and will look to secure their first win at St. Paul on Wednesday, April 19th.